So I realized I haven't really done a tour of this van in pretty much over a year at this point. I did do one with my first setup in here that featured like a Murphy bed style setup, but obviously a lot of things changed in my life since then. And for a number of reasons, we decided to kind of remodel the interior multiple different times. I think it's pretty much on its final setup though. I'm very happy with how it is right now. I think it's gonna stay this way for the foreseeable future. So I figure we might as well do a tour. Let's check it out. So starting from the outside of the van, it is a 2018 Nissan NV200. It's the S trim, has just over 30,000 miles currently, uh, and is definitely a minivan. It is definitely a compact cargo van. Inside has just about 30 square feet or so of usable space. It is kind of like a ultra tiny house on wheels, I guess you could say. And you know, from the outside, it does kind of look like a standard NV200, it is a little bit different in the sense that there is a pop top on the roof, so the roof is raised a little bit, uh, but otherwise it looks pretty normal. It does have the two solar panels. I have a 175 watt solar panel and then alongside it, I added an additional 100 watt solar panel later on for a total of 275 watts. There's also a max air fan on the roof for ventilation inside and I've been very happy with this setup on the roof. I should mention now that the van is for sale. Shannon and I have kind of come to the point where we are ready to list it and start taking offers for this van. So I am gonna put a link in the description below to my website and, and there's gonna be a page on there that's dedicated to this whole tour video here and we'll have pricing information and everything else. Feel free to send me an email if you are interested in this van. It'll be nate at elementvanlife.com. Now, I think it's time that we move to the inside here. The cockpit area is Pretty normal, looks like any other standard minivan or compact cargo van like this. It does have a backup camera, as I mentioned earlier, this is the S trim, so it is relatively basic, but it does have the backup camera and the little screen and the seats and everything like that. Uh, we, I try to keep that area as empty as possible. And then I do have a curtain set up here leading into the back and I, I use that for privacy. It is a blackout curtain. I did run a curtain rod across the top and then kind of, uh, you know, put it all together. It actually fits pretty nicely. It hasn't really moved in the last like almost two years I've had this fan at this point. I did buy this fan new uh, at the beginning of 2019. It is a 2018. It was one of the last of the 2018s and I've had it for over a year and a half. So, you know, it has, but it has been good. Like that, that whole curtain setup has worked out pretty well and it definitely helps with privacy and everything like that. That's been good. And then kind of moving into the back now, you know, the first thing you see when you open up the uh, passenger side door is the fridge that is an isotherm fridge a cruise 49 and it has a little freezer compartment in there definitely one of my favorite things about this build is having that you know side opening fridge there's a lot of space in there to be able to fit food and drinks and everything like that it's worked out really well has definitely been an upgrade over my dometic cf18 that i had previously big fan of that fridge is extremely efficient it's uh, wired directly into the kodiak which i'll get to in a little bit that is the power system that i'm using in this fan and have been using since i bought this fan and then moving around to the kitchen area here it is entirely designed to fit that isotherm fridge that is the whole reason that it is the width that it is and even even the dimensions and everything like that you know we were very very specific and that, that's just the way that it fits up against the wheel well you know it is definitely a you know there were a lot of thought went into it to make sure that we could get the fridge in the position that it is in currently and you know in terms of the kitchen itself we do have a butcher block countertop on here it is about it's four feet wide and then obviously the depth is meant to conform to the contours of the van and then we have the drop-in stove here by flame king i've been very happy with it overall it does it does rattle a little bit when i'm driving that's the only complaint i have about it but normally i'll just take like a pillowcase and stick it on top and, it, and you can't hear it at all it, it muffles the sound but otherwise the thing has been really awesome and we do have it so that it is directly below the the, uh, the fan the max air fan and then above the stove we also have this uh little splash guard that we put in that is magnetic so we've got the spice you know the spices and the little spice jars stuck up there i just think it looked kind of cool and definitely kind of made a better use of space than trying to fit those spices underneath but that being said there is a lot of storage underneath the countertop so i have this little drop down little drop down cabinet system here and 
Under there we have a couple of bins, and then I've got my pots and pans and everything like that. There's a ton of space, like a lot of the space isn't even used at this point, uh, but it does, it does work out really well. And then actually underneath that storage area, I have a desk, a little pull-out desk that I'm able to pull out and then set aside. I can close up the latch there, and then I have two drawer slides that pull out, and then that little piece of wood that's stored underneath uh, you may be able to set it on top of the drawer slides and create a very comfortable desk station here. A pretty good sized table actually. It's big enough for Shannon and I to both eat at and I also spend a lot of time working on my computer right in front of that little desk. It's very sturdy. It doesn't really move at all. Below that main compartment, I have quite a bit of other storage compartments. So I've got one here on the left. It's just basically for random things that I'm just kind of stuffing in there right now. And then I have these sliding doors here. One of them has food. I tend to keep food in it. And then on the other side, there is my propane tank for the stove, as well as just a couple of bottles of water and things like that. That's generally what we keep in there. And then underneath that, I have another storage compartment. And then I have the toilet on the left so I actually did decide to put in a little uh, porta potty in here I don't really use the thing that often but it is there for emergencies and I figured whoever buys this fan in the future will more than likely want to have something like that in here and, and I think that pretty much sums it up for the kitchen area like I said I have kind of gone through a few different setups in here you will notice that I do not have a sink I know I've talked about this before but I did have a sink back in my element years and years ago and I just kind of got sick of dealing with the gray water tank it would get really gross and start smelling weird and I just wasn't really a big fan of it so I decided to do away with the sink and I haven't had one in this fan since I've owned it I do use those bottles of water just to kind of wash off dishes outside usually you know you just kind of spray a little bit of water on it and use a paper towel and wipe it down spray bottle I've also used that before I find that that's just a little bit easier to deal with than having a gray water tank there's definitely space in here if you wanted to add a sink absolutely could put one right next to the drop-in stove uh, but we, you would lose counter space and you know like I said I just haven't really been a fan of dealing with the gray water so that's why I do not have a sink in here moving on now to the bed setup the bed kind of uh, encompasses quite a bit of storage as well I have a lot of space in here there are three drawers directly underneath the bed I do use one of them for all of my clothes and then I have another one for just random camera gear and like astrophotography gear telescope and stuff like that and then I have a third one which is specifically designed for my guitar it's a pretty good sized drawer and I do have a collapsible journey guitar so I'm able to kind of fit it in there and it fits absolutely perfectly it is literally the exact size we, we designed it specifically around the guitar so definitely a good sized drawer and then in the back I also have another compartment I mean, I use that for tools and then I have just a little magnetic latch that kind of pulls off and allows me to access and pull the things out. It's definitely not uh, an ideal organization structure in there. I feel like having a drawer there would have been good as well, but we just kind of ran out of time and didn't have time to put a drawer in there when I was building this with Lex uh, over six months ago. So I'm pretty happy with it though. And then you'll notice the space directly below the bed is just a giant storage compartment and the reason that I have that is for my surfboard. We designed that to fit my board so that I could easily slide it in here along with you know wetsuits and kind of just stuff towels and other sporting gear and stuff in there. I have a driver in there right now for golf and just kind of try to make it work but it is a really nice little I guess like a garage kind of compartment where you can kind of throw a bunch of big things in there uh, and it works out really well. on to the actual bed setup it is a couch mode we did specifically cut the uh, the mattress I actually kind of repurposed Shannon's old mattress in her van and we made it so that it fits perfectly snug when it is in bed mode so it's really easy to set this thing up you just kind of take the flap and then it flaps down we do have a couple of little uh, rests I guess that are on the kitchen area and you know the, the bed flap just rests perfectly on those we did put you'll notice a metal frame 
around the bed flap and that is just to kind of give it a little bit more stability. There's no support up towards the front so we wanted to make sure that it was rigid and that it could hold up if someone were to sit on the front area where there's not technically a leg directly underneath it. It takes all of two seconds to set up, very easy to, to do. It can be done from inside the van and it can also be done from, you know, from outside obviously but it is definitely possible to do it uh, inside the van without opening any doors when you're in stealth mode. And it, like I said, it makes a pretty good size bed. It is about 42 inches in width. It is a little bit bigger than a twin. and It is a very comfortable mattress. I did use like a speaker carpet, a gray speaker carpet to line all the walls. And then inside the walls, I do have an insulation. It's a 3M Thinsulate. You can kind of see it uh, given like a little bit of a cushion right here. I kind of did that on purpose so that it gave a little bit of a cushion behind the bed. And then, you know, inside the walls, like I said, it does have that 3M Thinsulate. Definitely has made a difference. It is nice in the winter time. It keeps things a little bit warmer in here for sure. Regarding the power system in this van, I am running the Energy Kodiak still i've had that thing since i've had this van and i am an, a huge fan of it guys it is super easy it was really really easy to set up obviously i didn't have to really worry about too much and it's been more than enough to keep the fridge running full time even you know during the summertime when the days are longer i'm able to sit in here and edit on my 4k laptop i mean literally all day and the solar system does not blink like i said it has 275 watts on the roof i did add a 100 watt panel when I was in San Francisco, you know, I was there in the winter time and I realized that I probably needed a little bit more. And once I added that 100 watt panel, didn't have any issues keeping the fridge running 24 seven. And the last thing I should mention in terms of the power system is this lighting system that we put in here. These are LED lights. They are GoV LED lights. I've really, really enjoyed them. They do all kind of different multicolor features and they're very, very bright. So being in here, it is, it's a lot better at nighttime. Uh, in terms of uh, you know in terms of just being able to hang out in here especially even in stealth mode you really can't see inside i do have window covers for the uh, rear windows here these windows are limo tinted so you know during the uh, during the day you can't see in here at all and then at night if i do have all the lights on i put up the window coverings that shannon and i made they've just got a couple of rare earth magnets around the edges and we cut them specifically to size so that they fit snug against the uh, against the edges of the window I think that pretty much sums it up for at least the downstairs in the van. The last thing that I want to talk about is the pop top. The pop top is a huge reason why I decided to go with the NV200 and it was done by a company called GTRV. They're based out in Northern California and I'm very grateful that I went with them. You know, this video is not sponsored by them or anything like that, but I, I am very grateful for my relationship with Mark, the owner of the company and you know just what he's done for me over the last year and a half i'm very very happy with what they did and and the work that they did i believe that they do do some really quality stuff so i am going to put a link in the description below to their website as well if anybody out there is considering a professional conversion or a pop top on an nv200 or a mercedes metris they do a whole bunch of different fans guys tons and tons of different fans they do a really good job so i would definitely recommend checking them out but kind of going into the pop top now you know Again, big reason why I chose the NV200. My favorite feature of the pop top is actually what it does to the van in stealth mode. It adds about six inches or so of headroom in here, even when it is down. And I think that's my favorite thing, guys, because it really does kind of give you a lot of space. I can almost stand up in the van. It allows you to have just a little bit of extra living space. And that little bit makes a huge difference. <laughs> Figure I might as well put the top up here while I'm talking about the pop top. It was getting kind of warm and I, another really cool feature of the whole thing is that it does have the screens so I can pull down the screens and just kind of get a nice breeze in here. Perfect when you're parked right next to the ocean like this. And you know, it does allow for a huge amount of space. The pop top, what it does in here is it just kind of opens everything up really nicely, allows me to be able to stand up all the way. The upper bunk is also really useful. I do use it primarily right now just to store bedding. I kind of keep everything up there and then when I do put the pop top up, I just push it towards the front there. 
but it's nice you know i've had guests with me on the road i've had friends join me multiple different times and then they've been able to sleep up there and i've been able to sleep downstairs and it kind of gives you just like a little bit of like a i guess like a private little tent area for guests when they're on the road with us so that's kind of cool it has been really really neat and Overall, I've been very, very happy with the pop top. I know I mentioned that in the other video that I did not too long ago, and it definitely makes this fan. It's a, it's a big part of, big part of this conversion. Like I said, a big reason why I went with the NV200. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, there's going to be a link in the description below to my website. I have an article on there with more information about this van build, and I'll have some pricing stuff as well for those of you that may be interested in buying it. My email address is nate at elementvanlife.com. Feel free to send me an email if you are interested. It's going to be in Massachusetts for the next week or two. And then we are going to be spending the winter in Florida. And I'm going to get into that in a future video. But that is our plan for the winter. And so it will be down there, I guess, eventually. I do have to get from here to there. So somewhere, it'll be somewhere between here and Florida over the next couple of weeks. And then after that, we'll hopefully be, uh, you know, be able to sell it and move it on to the next owner. Very excited for whoever that is. And... Thanks for watching, guys. I can't thank you all enough for your support over the years, especially to my patrons and those on Patreon. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel and supporting these videos and allowing me to make these videos every week. I'll talk to you all in the next one.